Hey, what's going on, heroes? Poji Force here, and welcome back to our part two of our discussion about the new Pokemon Sun and Moon information that we received this week. Uh, today, we'll be talking about Team Skull, um, what I think their cultural references might be, uh, what their inspiration is, what I think the goals of Team Skull might be, and what I think their role is in the overall theme of Pokemon Sun and Moon. If you haven't seen part one, the link will be in an annotation right here. And if you have not seen the trailer itself, the link will be in the description below. And that will also put an annotation over here. So if you have not seen either of those videos, go check them out. I think you'll find them very interesting. Especially watch that trailer because that's what we're going to be talking about today. I'm only going to be giving you guys some still images uh, for the purpose of this discussion. So if you want to see the trailer in full, go check that out. But today we're talking about... The new evil team, Team Skull. And in Team Skull is actually kind of very interesting and in a way very surprising because when we saw the trial captains, we're like, wow, this is completely new. No gems? What's the deal? Are we even going to have an evil team? So that was pretty up in the air. We weren't sure if it was going to happen. But we've been given Team Skull. And I actually really like their logo. I think it's very clever. You've got this sideways crooked S kind of making the eye sockets of the skull. It kind of actually looks like graffiti. And that actually brings me to my first point about uh, Team Skull, is that their uh, mannerisms, their appearance, and perhaps even their goals and their personalities seem to relate a lot to American gang culture. For example, um, we'll take a look at the Team Skull grunts first and we'll get into that. As you can see, they have the large emblems, probably in silver, it's some sort of metal, on a big chain around their necks. They're wearing bandanas over their faces, wearing baggy pants, high top shoes. These are all things that you often see in gang culture. Um, not exclusively, but it is often associated with it. Now, I did some research into American gang culture uh, for the purpose of this video, and there's a few things here that I think very, are very interesting and happen to relate to the two administrators that we were given so far for Team Skull. The first is Plumeria, this pretty young lady right here with her very long pink and yellow hair. And she's described as Team Skull's big sister. And it says in the video, you're picking on my cute, dumb brothers and sisters. And it's very interesting because she's ba you know she's referring to the other grunts. So she's referring to them as her brothers and sisters. And in my research, one thing that I found is that often when someone joins a gang, they're looking for a surrogate family. They either, they, receive, they look for that attention, affirmation and protection that they may feel they are lacking at home. So, bro gangs are really like brotherhoods, taken a bit to the extreme, where they're try they come together, they look out for each other, and if you slight one of them, you slight all of them. So, she's looking out for her brothers and sisters as she sees it. So, she's kind of got that, that gang culture mentality going on there, and I can actually admire her for it because you know, looking out for others, that empathy, is very important to being a human being. It's kind of twisted in, when it comes to gangs, but I can still admire that. And I happen to like her character. I think she's going to be very interesting. But then we also get the Team Skull leader, Guzma. And he's also got a lot of those, uh, those, vi those visual symbols that are often associated with gangs. He's got the thick gold chain. His uh, emblem is actually gold on his chest. He's got uh, interesting, unique shades, a big gold watch. He's got a sleeve tattoo. A lot of things that are often associated with gang culture. Oftentimes, uh, illegitimately, I will admit, I've known people with sleeve tattoos that I'm pretty sure are not in gangs and are really good people. Um, but these are all, again, all things that are often associated with gangs. But Guzma's the big boss of Team Skull, and he is not native. To Alola. You can see that right here in his shot with him and Kukui. He's of a lighter skin. He's got darker uh, uh, eyes. I don't know why he's got rings around his eyes. Um, he's got white hair. And I got a feeling he's really not a native to Alola. And that seems like it's going to be a big part of this story going forward. We'll get to that in a minute. But it also shows in this trailer that as a little background that he and Kukui apparently know each other. If Guzma's not a native, he's at least lived here for a while because Kukui and Guzma both, according to Guzma, were rejected for being trial captains or at least captains of some kind. Trial captains are the only captains I'm aware of. So that's the only thing that makes sense to me. 
So Guzma actually seems to recall up uh, another thing that I found in my research, and that gang members often join gangs because they're having issues with identity or recognition. Uh, they want to be seen as intelligent leaders or athletes. They want to be part of a group where they feel that they can excel. They want to be recognized. They want to seem worthwhile. And if you're rejected as a trial captain, I could see that as a justifiable cause. You maybe want to go, I'm going to show you. I'm going to go start my own group, and it's going to be awesome. And it's called, I'm going to call it Team Skull because we're badasses. So, and Kukui was also, I mean, Kukui also, you could potentially see... I feel this relationship between Kukui and Guzma is going to be very interesting because apparently Kukui was also rejected by the to be a captain. And instead of being bitter about it and becoming something evil like Guzma did, he decided to take it in a positive way. He's like, if I'm not good enough to be a captain, I'm going to improve myself and end up becoming this region's professor, which is a huge, huge deal. So that's Guzma. Now, this whole thing... Like I said, the, this whole team seems to be about gang culture, and their motivations behind that is probably an awful lot like actual gang culture, where they're more of an anti-culture, and they kind of strike back at the world around them. They resent it. They're embittered by it because it didn't treat them well, so they're striking back, and they're looking out only for each other. That seems to be the primary attitude of gang culture. I'm no shrink. I'm no specialist, this is just from my little bit of research that I did for this video, and just from my perception. Now before I continue on, um, I kind of want to give you guys some background on how I feel the evil teams in the games actually work, because Team Skull is very unique, and that if they're kind of gang related, every other evil team we've had up to this point was very organized crime, very regimented, very precise, they had very clean, pristine, official looking uniforms, uh, almost military like precision. I don't know if Team Skull's going to be like that. So far every indication I've seen seems to imply otherwise because Guzma's very boisterous. He's very loud and he's very proud. Um, granted so was Archie in the Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire remakes, but it's not the reserved uh, calculating minds that were Giovanni, Maxi, Cyrus, etc. But I felt that each generation and its evil team kind of presented a conflict of ideals. And that basically, not so much like, oh, we're bad guys and we're doing something bad and you're a good guy and you got to stop us or we're going to do something mean to you. Um, that's how it looks on the surface, but then it's the ideals behind it. Team Rocket was very much, we're going to use Pokemon for profit and we don't care. If we hurt them, we don't care if they're living creatures, we're going to use them as tools for profit. And your characters like the Pokemon are friends, they're our allies, they're, we trust them, and you shouldn't do that. And you stop them, and it actually that's kind of reinforced when you battle your, gym, your, your rival as the Elite Four champion, and Professor Oak criticizes him for not putting enough faith in his Pokemon. So there's that, and that's further reinforced in Generation 2, Gold and Silver, when Team Rocket comes back, and they're cutting off Slowpoke Tails to sell as a delicacy, and they forced Evolved a Magikarp to a Gyarados for Lake Rage to kind of generate a tourist attraction. All of this is to make money, but in the process, they're destroying Pokemon's lives and their livelihoods, and a lot of people are getting hurt in the process, too. So that... All of, it, all of that is basically Team Rocket. This idea of Pokemon as tools versus Pokemon as friends. Now, Generation 3, it gets a little more interesting because you have two evil teams. You got Maxi and Archie, Magma and Aqua. Both of them are saying, we should control nature. The, the motives behind why they wanted to control nature were different. Magma wanted to create more land for people. Aqua wanted to create more water for Pokemon. In both cases, both of them attempting to control nature ended up being a disaster. And basically, you as the player uh, and basically the Hoenn region as a whole was about coexistence with nature. You had Pacific Log Town, which was basically just a bunch of floating logs left out on the ocean. They didn't make a man-made island. They just took a little bit of logs, 
and made houses and they let the ocean continue on around them as it were and then you had four tree city where instead of cutting down trees and clear cutting land they built their homes in the trees hohen region and the ruby sapphire omega ruby alpha sapphire games are all about coexisting with nature that's the principle they're trying to teach versus this uh basically what you shouldn't do thing the the other ideal that men the man should control nature we should bend it to our will and break it that doesn't work generation four is a little more complex you've got team galactic with cyrus and whether you're playing diamond pearl or platinum he's trying to use the creation trio to create a world to his liking it's basically a world that's for cyrus the leader of team galactic and basically you're trying to stop him because you understand that in doing so he's going to destroy everything but what he wants so the core concept there seems to be uh what's good for one versus what's good for many and this is a common concept that we seem to see in a lot of things it's like do you save this one person who's very precious to you or do you save this bus full of strangers and oftentimes we feel it's the more moral and more uh, justifiable thing to do to save the bus full of strangers because it's more lives and that one person may be very important to you but that bus full of strangers may be very important to multiple other people and it's just common sense it's the moral high ground you feel bad doing it of course because you personally suffer but that's the sacrifice you made and Cyrus wasn't willing to make that sacrifice so that seems to be the theme behind Generation 4. Now, Generation 5, I'm having a little difficulty with, to be honest, because Generation 5, Generation 5 2, Black and White 2, kind of had a stronger focus on the two cover legendaries and their, the differences between truth and ideals. They focus on it a fair bit more than in the original Black and White. And Team Plasma, which is the villains in Black and White and Black and White 2, and Black and White, they're very much about Pokemon are being used and abused, and they should not be at the subservience of humans. They should be their own thing. They should be free. And it turned out that they were being manipulated in the background and had very noble goals. And I think that Team Plasma is a team that you can certainly sympathize with in that respect. But you're like, but Pokemon are our friends and we work together and you shouldn't make us live apart. And at that point, both sides seem like a valid argument so it's not so much this is a clearly bad thing versus this is a clearly good thing so generation 5 is very complex in that respect but i think that is the theme there there is the ideals versus the truth both of which are a good thing and that kind of carries through also and i suppose what i'm talking about was like pokemon should be separate pokemon should be their own creatures that's the ideal versus but we work better together pokemon are our friends and that is the truth now, Generation 6 is Team Flare is a little more straightforward than Generation 5. Team Flare felt that the world could not be saved, that the world was full of trash and detritus and greed and all kinds of evil, corrupt things, and it could not be saved. It was time for a clean slate. Pull out Noah's Ark, fill it up with the ones we think are worth saving, wipe the slate clean, and start over. And your character is like, but this world is beautiful. This world has so many great things, so much potential. It's worth saving and that one's pretty straightforward team flare is like this is where we should start over get rid of all the evil and all the corruption and start over and you're like but there's so much good here that you would destroy in the process so that's another common thing that you see in other games and other uh, media is like is this a world worth saving i guess suppose is the common question and team flare thought no and the player character thought yes so now we're getting to my theory about Team Skull and what I think they have to do with Pokemon Sun and Moon. Now, like the other games, I feel that Sun and Moon has this theme. And the theme to me seems to be very strongly be about the heritage and culture of the Alolan Islands. And by extension, the Hawaiian Islands that they're based off of. Because the Hawaiian Islands also have a very strong culture. But the Hawaiian Islands also, from my understanding, struggled with colonialism. And there's tourism as well. And they're a very popular tourist destination. But at a, in a certain way, there's the danger of their culture being perverted by this tourism. And then the whole colonialism and the, the, trying to hold on to the, their native culture and their heritage is a very big deal to Hawaii. 
And I feel that that carries over to Alola because you have the trial captains, you have um, the, the kahunas, you have all of this strong cultural connections in Alola. And there's also seems to be this concept of invaders trying to destroy that culture. You have the Alolan Vulpix, which is an ad adaptation of an invasive species. It's not native to the Alolan Islands. And then you have your main character who, like Guzma, is pale-skinned and very clearly not from this region. He is an immigrant to Alola. I wouldn't call him a, a tourist because it seems very much like he's moved in, but he is an immigrant to Alola. And then you have Guzma, who kind of brings this other culture, like the mainland American gang culture, to Alola. Let's say we'll t he takes the Unovan gang culture and brings it to Alola. And he tries to basically, I don't know, his, his motivations are pretty vague right now. We don't know a whole lot about him, but he was rejected as a trial captain. So either he was attempting to assimilate that culture or he was trying to become a part of that culture. And one way or another, either the culture was trying to defend itself and it rejected him or he just wasn't acceptable by their standards. Like I said, he seems like he took it the wrong way and went to the dark side. But he was rejected. He was trying to be a part of that culture, and it didn't work out. And so, as I said, gang culture is kind of an anti-culture. It rejects and attacks the culture that embittered it to its situation, made it uh, angry at the world. So I think actually basically what's going to happen here is that since there's these totem Pokemon and there's these um, island guardians, is that I think Team Skull, I think what their motivation is here is to basically strike back against that culture. And what they're going to try to do is, I don't know, maybe they'll try to disrupt the trials, maybe they'll try to steal the guardian Pokemon, maybe they'll try to even destroy the guardian Pokemon or destroy the cover legendaries because you know they're going to be a, a central feature to the culture of Alola in some way. I think that's what Team Skull's motivation is here. And so basically we have this concept of strong heritage and culture versus destructive culture, anti-culture. So I think that's going to be the major theme behind Pokemon Sun and Moon. Again, there's not a whole lot of data to act off of here. This is just my theory based off of just a few seconds of footage from this new uh, trailer. But it seems very interesting to me. So I thought I would share that with you. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'd be very interested to hear what you think Team Skull is going to be up to. But that's all I have to say for today, guys. Stay tuned for the next episode where we'll talk about the new Pokemon and the new moves that we saw in this trailer. Please leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe to stay tuned for future videos. And as always, heroes, I'm Poji Force, and you guys stay awesome. Take care.